What if I told you that since the discovery of loneliness in 1959, the population has grown from three to eight billion? Yet, these feelings of loneliness are more prominent in today's generation than ever recorded. The elderly demographic suffers from this the most. As 60-year-old Scott a w o o d e w e r said, Christmas guts me every year. I already accept that there will not even be a phone call for me. The feelings of loneliness truly vary from person to person, but most people connect this feeling with feelings of helplessness and being emotionally overwhelmed. And the symptoms of loneliness include high levels of stress and risk of addiction. Despite this, we only have a relatively limited grasp on this branch of psychology. Loneliness is described as such a terrible and horrifying sensation that people will do nearly anything to avoid it, according to German psychiatrist Freda f r o m r e i c h m a n n This can be seen through 28-year-old Khalil, who broke religious and community barriers by drinking alcohol to dull the unloved, rejecting, and truly confusing emotions that he felt. Loneliness is also defined as the gap between connections we wish to experience and those we feel we do experience. So, in an attempt to create a more connected society, we began reaching out through others through apps like Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and Snapchat. But you might be surprised to find out that this has actually led to a more polarizing and increasingly lonely society. U.S. Surgeon General Vivek Murthy declared loneliness a true epidemic. Simultaneously. The UK appointed a minister of loneliness just a year after. It is safe to say that loneliness is a feeling that truly knows no bounds. As Dr. Heidi Grant Halverson said, the world grows smaller, more connected, more crowded, and ironically, increasingly lonely for many. With the introduction of the COVID-19 pandemic, the forces of loneliness have been widespread and have been indoctrinated into society. New studies have found that this lack of connection has life-threatening consequences, finding a higher connection to cardiovascular disease, depression, and even dementia, deducing that we as humans are required to feel connected to others. Loneliness is simply our brain's way of motivating us to reach out and build up our support systems. Though, just by being in the presence of others. We don't automatically feel connected. A frequent misconception is that just by being with others, we feel connected and we fulfill our need for this companionship that we all desire. But don't get this wrong: just by being in the presence of others that you aren't truly, truly closely connected with, we often feel increasingly lonely and desire closer connections. This reinforces the belief of quality. Over quantity, a few tight and truly covalent relationships outweigh the often shallow and frequent meaningless bonds that we have. <laughs> okay, I'm going to continue. Using this information, we can understand why so many adults constantly, constantly feel lonely. We can attribute this data to two studies: one claiming that 60% or three out of five Canadian adults claim loneliness regularly, and the other explaining how the 20% of the Canadian population living alone truly affects this number. Now, I think it is important that at this moment we begin questioning societal norms and changes, as well as stating that the data I just provided is pre-COVID data, which might be surprising to a few of you, since we've. Been disconnected for so long, yet most people contribute that this is due to the pandemic. But we've been like this for for centuries. Now, it is important to also state that to continue to understand why people feel so lonely during this pandemic, we need to understand the overarching lifestyle, living alone, and how it affects social isolation. Let's take a deeper look. Well. Social isolation is having a lack of people to interact with and having few personal connections. 
many of you and the general population has adopted this lifestyle in the midst of this pandemic. But don't get social isolation and loneliness mixed up. You can live a socially isolated life and not feel lonely, and you can live with friends and family and feel increasingly lonely. It all depends on the quality of your connections. New studies have found that social isolation actually has detrimental effects on the human mind and body, finding that living alone, loneliness, and social isolation can increase the premature mortality rate by up to an average of 30%. Now, this data truly speaks for itself here and reinforces that this has become a public health threat and that these symptoms are truly under-recognized publicly. The lack of education on the topic has led many to feel scared and unfamiliar with such emotions, especially during times of uncertainty. In times like this, it is important that we view these as truly something temporary and something we can overcome. As professor of psychiatric epidemiology, Harrison Conan said, we're in this together, but feeling so alone. This can be credited to the pandemic's ability to just evaporate weak ties, which a body of research exhibits to be predominantly positive and meaningful relationships. With this evaporation, new and greater studies have been done by meta-analysis of 150 large-scale studies. <laughs> Another thing we've all experienced is online Zoom or work calls, which I think we can all agree here that is something that has been with us in the past two or three years. And these calls don't feel the same as face-to-face -face connection. In fact, in a study conducted by Forbes Insight, 85% of people confirmed that face-to-face -face contact is one of the leading characteristics of building a longer and more meaningful relationship. Another thing that has been found is that... Okay, so how do we combat such a thing during a pandemic, you might be wondering. Why is everyone telling us to be so socially connected and present? while we're being forced into disconnection and true social isolation. Well, in the pursuit of this answer, 60 researchers from around the world attended the International Positive Psychology Association's Sixth World Congress located in Melbourne, Australia, to discuss breakthroughs and insights on the science of well-being. Their conclusions found that those that feel more connected to others have a more sense of belonging and true happiness. And those that feel disconnected tend to feel more sad and lonely, which just reinforces this idea that this has become something truly terrifying for the general population. But does this type of solitude always have to be negative? Well, productive solitude is a great way to make time for contemplation, creativity, and just personal reflection. Researchers at Russia's National Research University Higher School of Economics explored this phenomenon in contrast to the feelings of loneliness. The main difference here being that we don't deliberately seek loneliness. That would be ridiculous. But we plan time for productive solitude. Their, their studies conclude by stating that those that reap the benefits of productive solitude tend to feel more calm, and relaxed, and find more meaning and pleasure when they find themselves alone. Another thing that is important to look at, as I previously stated, okay, is the recent societal changes and technological advances that the world has been going through. This has all led to the downfall of neighborhood unity, and has more importantly reduced the amount of time that we spend with others on truly reinforcing and building up our personal connections. Another point to look at is belonging. As medical doctor Saul Levine from the California, uh, 
from the University of California, San Diego, classifies belonging as a key cornerstone of how we evaluate our worthiness. He says that there's support and comfort in belonging. And in his article, Belonging and Loneliness, he states, belonging is a boon to live, while loneliness is the true bane of life. This emphasizes the importance of long-term personal relationships, especially with friends and family. And he also states that the reciprocal is quite evident as well. Those that have few to no personal connections in which they feel truly, truly appreciated tend to feel more sad and lonely. And as the times change and more and more studies on the negative health impacts emerge, I think it is increasingly important that we can view this as something that we as a population can truly overcome. So you may be wondering, how do we overcome this obstacle? Well, step one would be acceptance. You aren't alone. Millions upon millions of people go through the same things that you experience on a daily basis. And with new studies emerging that 40% of the global population will feel lonely at some point or another in their lives, it is important that we view this as something temporary and something that you can overcome on a personal level. Next step would be nurturing existing relationships. Loneliness truly makes us pull away from others, even when we desire them the most. Nurturing existing relationships would be one of the first and most important leading steps to pull yourself out of the rabbit hole of loneliness. And please remember, quality over quantity. The more meaningful your relationships feel, the better you will feel. And if you're really feeling up for it, an additional step for this would be joining a club, class, or volunteering. This all gives you equal opportunity to create the new experiences and connections that we desire. And volunteering specifically helps us reap the benefits of altruism, or giving back to others, which can help you lead a more meaningful life. Now, it is time to make a step for change. Loneliness is a universal burden that we as humans hold, and this has been truly predominant throughout history. From the youngest to the oldest in our generation, loneliness is seen across the entire demographic. And as more and more information on the negative health impacts emerge, now it is time for us to take that true step. As entrepreneur and author Victoria Adino said, don't step backward toward nothing. Step forward towards something. Better awkward steps forward than coward steps backward. Emphasizing that now we must truly and truly recognize this and take that, take that first step to combating this as we emerge from this bond-breaking pandemic, weak tie-evaporating pandemic, as a, more, as a stronger, more concerted, and increasingly linked society. Thank you. <laughs>